Hello, everybody. Oops. Um, hi, I'm uh, Uberto, and uh, we will t uh, talk a lot about uh, morphism and uh, category theory. And uh, this will be more or less the map of uh, this presentation. And uh, we, I hope uh, to have a uh, uh, something, I mean, enjoyable trip together. <laughs> of course, uh, we it's just uh, um, a light talk. I don't want it to be too heavy. Uh, so my, if I we want also to make a like, diagram of what I'm doing, I'm a programmer. I started with uh, object orientation, uh, agile. I'm very strong about uh, TDD, opinionated about TDD. Now I'm doing a lot of uh, functional programming. Uh, I really love Kotlin, really passionate about it, and I work in the uh, finance industry. And uh, if you like the talk, please follow me on Twitter or blog. Uh, I, I hope to blog about also a few stuff that we will see now. And uh, so let's put uh, some, uh, <laughs> at least I hope uh, you won't sleep completely. Um, someone of you is still uh, awake or <laughs> not the blooding from the nose at the end of the presentation. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, this is uh, the real uh, point. I really like, uh, there is a lot of people that, I mean, everybody talk about uh, functional programming, but functional programming is not about lambdas. Lambdas is just a tool. What is really important in functional programming, in the mindset of functional programming, is that to think about properties and transformation. And uh, more films means transformation. And all this talk will talk about transformation. So we will s you will hear the word the transformation morphism a lot of time in this talk because we really think it's important. OK, so this is about category theory. Uh, what is this category theory? I think uh, there are some definition. I mean, I like uh, is a general abstract nonsense, which is more or less summarize everything, which is a good thing because it's something that is uh, abstract, is uh, general, and it does no meaning uh, for se. It's something that uh, we use as a tool to get the meaning out of other stuff. But um, I don't know how many of you knows about uh, this comic. Calvin and Dobbs. Okay, uh, more than uh, when I did uh, this talk in Germany, nobody <laughs> knew. So. so this is a very uh, one of my favorite comics, and uh, there is uh, this uh, um, stuffed uh, tiger. When uh, there is uh, some uh, the kid and some adult are present, but when uh, they are alone, they uh, I mean the kid and the tiger are alone. The tiger is uh, alive and they can talk with. And um, yeah, so we can say this is a, there is a ca uh, category of stuffed toys and a category of tigers and someone that connect together. So I'll try to, <laughs> to say uh, like. And uh, to see what is a category, okay. It's a category, you need uh, five things. It's quite simple. One uh, connection object, not out of object in uh, object oriented programming, just any kind of thing that you can think as object. A collection of arrows. Arrows are, you can think a bit like a function. Each arrows must work on only on two objects. It cannot work on more than one. And uh, what I mean is that it take one object, and from one object goes to the other. It cannot take two objects and go nowhere. So two objects from one to another. And uh, we can combine the arrows. Also, this is uh, necessary to make a category. So you can have uh, arrows from A to B, and arrows from B to C, and then you can combine. And then each object is also an arrow that goes to the object and go back to the object. Because each arrow connected two objects, but the two objects can be the same. OK, so this is a bit of a summary with uh, my fantastic drawing abilities. <laughs> but uh, so we have uh, the object, we have the arrows, arrows from A to B, and then we can combine. And also the combining must be associative. So it's not 
really important if uh, I combine, uh, if I have uh, two hours, if I combine one to two or two to three, I mean if I have three hours. So this is just a, a category. And there are so many categories, and the category is used for physics, uh, mathematics, uh, a lot of other stuff. But for our um, talk, for our introduction, we'll, we'll stay very, very light. And we can think of a category like a tube. So if uh, the objects are the station, then uh, the arrows are the travel routes around the station. And uh, each arrow is connected to station. And uh, you can imagine the identity arrows like uh, going out to, to the station and go back to the same station. And arrows composition is traveling along the line, so you go from one arrows to another arrows. And yeah, identity is staying on the same station. And so you can have uh, something like that for the central line if you are from London. <laughs> and uh, you can see that uh, uh, Basically, you can combine uh, two arrows and have uh, a bigger arrows that combine uh, the other arrows. And uh, one, two, three, and this is one, two, three. And the point is that uh, uh, we don't have to define uh, the bigger arrows because just uh, we know that uh, we can combine uh, the single one, so the big one came out for free. And uh, yeah, more or less, uh, this, ca this presentation can be a category as well. I mean, we can uh, have uh, these uh, things here are uh, uh, type class, and we can uh, go from one concept to the other, and then go back. And so category is something quite uh, lightweight. But because it's so lightweight, it's also so powerful, because you can use uh, so many things. And uh, functional programming, and uh, when I talk about functional programming, more strictly speaking, is a typed uh, lambda language, uh, is, a, uh, is a category. And uh, in the programming, the um, objects are the type that we have in the, so the classes, for example. And the function are the morphism. Now, uh, to be fair, we, should, uh, we shouldn't have a, um, partial function. Partial function is a function that uh, doesn't return value for each uh, uh, input. So for example, if you have a, a function that uh, divide uh, an int by zero, no, but divide an int by another int, basically, uh, it cannot be defined uh, when uh, the other int uh, is a zero. So I it's a partial function. But also much simpler, if you have something that goes to the DB to return uh, an object, if the uh, DB is empty, it, won't, it cannot return anything. So those are called a partial function. And uh, of course, they don't fit very well with the category theory. And in reality, for a programming language, all the functions are partial functions because there is always the possibility of uh, an exception or the possibility of a program that never return. So when uh, mathematical, this is just a bit technical, but when mathematical talk about category in a programming language, they say that uh, there is always a hidden return possible type, uh, which is the function not returning anything. It's called the button type. But OK, let's forget about it. When uh, we talk about uh, functional programming, there is a big uh, change of mindset uh, in my experience that I came from uh, object-oriented and not really strong on mathematics. And when I think object-oriented programming, I think something like uh, uh, bacteria, something that uh, communicate, uh, that keep hidden everything inside and just uh, communicate through message. Instead, the functional programming is a bit like uh, gears or pipes where everything must be completely outside. It must be completely visible, completely transparent, and uh, you can see everything how it works. And it's much more, you need much more precision. And it's typical that in object-oriented language you wanted to keep uh, the internal state hidden, but in functional uh, programming paradigm, you wanted to have everything immutable, so you don't need it to be hidden because uh, it's immutable, so you can show everybody. And in object-oriented, you have uh, the interfaces. In uh, functional programming, you have uh, the type classes, which are similar, but a bit different. And we will see later. 
And uh, if you're interested, this is uh, another talk that uh, I did uh, a few weeks ago. And it's uh, much more technical about uh, uh, um, functional programming. Well, much, uh, it's less theoretical. It's uh, more like uh, functional programming in uh, reality. I mean, some uh, uh, code example. But uh, it's quite interesting because uh, uh, it was uh, talking about event sourcing. And uh, in event sourcing, you have uh, the, an object that changes state using events. And uh, when you put all together, this is also a category. You have uh, the events of uh, event source became uh, uh, morphism that uh, w go from one type uh, to another type. So this, for example, is uh, the example was uh, an order for um, a pizza here. Uh, so you can have an order, then you add the address, uh, and etc. And uh, it can be mapped as a, a category. If you are interested, that this is. But okay, the um, the example that we see is uh, in Kotlin. Kotlin is a very popular language now, and um, it's very very nice for functional programming. I don't go too much in the detail. If you don't know much about uh, this, is very very quick uh, just to understand the example. If you came from Java, so how many of you know about the uh, Kotlin? I mean, able to read the Kotlin code, I mean, even if you don't use, okay, I think, very good. So just, uh, yeah, basically, you can read that. <laughs> uh, the ex ju just to understand the example. And uh, Kotlin has uh, this uh, library, which I'm also trying to help uh, the guys, and uh, um, which is a bit equivalent of uh, Scala, Scala Z or SCATS. And uh, it's uh, nice for functional programming, but you don't strictly need this to do functional programming Kotlin. And also Kotlin is uh, thinking there is a proposal to add uh, type classes to the language itself. Now, purity and immutability. So when uh, people talk about uh, functional programming, usually they always say functional programming is about purity immutability and uh, function as a first uh, class uh, object, which is absolutely true, but it's not the end of the story. I mean, these are just uh, the detail, the tools that we use. What we really want uh, in functional programming is uh, be able to do transformation and composition. And to do transformation and composition, we need purity and immutability, because we cannot do composition if the object change. When uh, we talk about uh, mathematics, if is, uh, we define uh, the, the integer 5, the integer 5 is immutable. It cannot become 4.5 uh, after a while. Everything must be immutable. But this is just to, for us to create our program, to define our language, our model. But when we go inside, the details, of course, is uh, assembly language. So everything, it's not purity something that uh, we, I don't know, we idolize uh, or we have uh, to revere the purity. Purity is just a tool because we want to compose and transform. And uh, I was talking about, okay, let's uh, see which is the first uh, object in this uh, category world. Well, it's a special category. So let's say that uh, we have uh, a category that uh, you remember, so the object and the arrows, but uh, with only one object. So if it is only one object, because we can imagine that all the other objects are uh, collapsed, what will go the arrows? I mean, the arrows have no other way that go from that object to the same object. Which doesn't mean that th they don't do anything, because the objects are types, so they can uh, actually modify the internal stuff. But uh, from a topological point of view, they just go. So each category that has only one uh, object is a monoid. And uh, you have to remember that uh, also arrows can be composed. So what we have here is that uh, this kind of uh, a blob, which is uh, our own object, and all these arrows that goes and goes from here to here. And we can combine the arrows one with another. 
So if uh, we have, uh, we talk about, uh, for example, natural numbers, we have uh, the arrow that goes in, in s plus one, let's say, that goes from uh, the object of uh, all natural numbers and go back. And then we can compose the plus one with the plus one, and we have uh, the plus two arrows, and etc. And this is also a way to define uh, natural numbers. Um, you probably have to ask a mathematician to have the detail, but this is a very powerful way to define what the natural numbers are using category theory. But okay, this is very nice if you are a programmer, uh, if you are a mathematician, but we are a programmer. And um, so what uh, we have to know about uh, monoids. Uh, so to, to have uh, this monoids, we have uh, to remember that we, we need uh, this way to combine uh, the arrows, which is a uh, combine called, or sometimes append. And uh, we need uh, a neural element uh, because, yes, monoid is also this thing that it can stay on the same object. So uh, we have these three laws, basically. I think the, uh, the empty element uh, combined with something written the other. And uh, finally, uh, the last uh, point uh, before going to see the code, <laughs> we have to talk about what is a type class and what is an interface. Now, in object orientation, we call the class, it, uh, what is in functional programming is a type. So because we have a class of object, instead in functional programming, we, we say we have uh, a type uh, that can be uh, anything. And then uh, we have uh, a type class uh, where that is kind of a, a class of classes, which if we wanted to transform in uh, object-oriented. And this more or less similar to what uh, in object-oriented we have uh, the interface. But in functional programming, we don't ha really have the inheritance. We have a very, just very limited. And uh, so what uh, we have uh, is something like, uh, um, okay, so we wanted to, to say this something, for example, for a monoid, we need that to have a law that combine two elements. But um, we cannot, if we have an interface, basically we have a kind of a base class and then we say, okay, combine, put it all together. But here we want to say that, no, we want to, to combine the two elements only if they have the same type. Just to, um, we will see the code, but just to think about the equal method in Java. The equal method accept uh, two objects. But it uh, would be much better if the equal method will accept only this uh, object of the same type uh, of the, our uh, specific uh, ca class. So uh, we, we can write in Java something like uh, uh, string equals uh, integer. Of course, we return false, but uh, it's not a problem of compilation. But uh, it should be better if uh, it will be also a compilation error because you cannot really have a string and uh, integer equal. So type class try to do this. They, comp they compare the object, they allow on the specific object without uh, trying to abstract them. And uh, s to make it this work uh, with the current uh, prog uh, programming languages, there is an instance, which is uh, more or less like a singleton that uh, uh, allows us to check that the type is uh, in, in identical. And we can also use the instance to have a different implementation on the um, keeping the law. But for example, you have to combine two object, but you can do in different, uh, technically different way, for example, using uh, um, parallelism. Or you can do in another way that uh, still uh, respect uh, the the contract, let's say. So this is uh, how code will look like. This is um, uh, Kotlin. And uh, I'm not really suggesting that you use this code in your production. This is more like a, a didactic to code to understand. So basically the idea is that uh, you have uh, the monoid of a string. So when we have uh, the monoid of string, basically when we combine two strings, so we combine empty with A, and we, we have A as a result. And uh, yeah, we can also combine all of them, and they have an arrow. Or we can combine the integer with the integer monoid, 
And in, in integer monoid, we have, uh, of course, the sum. Or we can also have another integer monoid that, that does a multiplication, for example. But we cannot have uh, an integer monoid that does a division, because division is not uh, associative. Um, yeah, I mean, monoid is uh, just uh, uh, a first step that is not really useful for SEP, because, of course, if we wanted to uh, add uh, two strings, we just use uh, add two string. We don't need a special library to have a monoid. But uh, from a mathematical point of view, we are doing exactly a monoid. So also, we have to remember that studying category is not exactly the same as using a category library. I mean, the library can be useful for something, but uh, the concept of the base, they still stay valid, even if uh, we are not using uh, arrows, uh, we are just using our normal code. And then uh, the next uh, um, the next element, the next uh, type class, which is called functors. And the functors are transformer. And uh, that's probably the most important thing of uh, this talk, or, or in general, when you start uh, um, category or functional programming, learning, understanding, deeply understanding functor is uh, the most important step. O everything else just came from functors. So, you really have to understand this. And uh, what functors does basically is uh, take uh, some uh, object from one category and then transform it to another category. But uh, when they do this transformation, they have to keep the property. So for example, if uh, we transform from uh, the category of uh, uh, string, for example, the category of int, we, we just need to, to keep some properties. And um, they also can work in the same category, and the, in this case they are called end of functors. Uh, so for example, transforming a string in a string. And uh, in that case, if uh, they are end of functors, the, we have an advantage that basically we can get uh, the output of our end of functors as an input of uh, the other end of functors because uh, they have the same. But um, okay, uh, there are just two laws for functors, which are mathematical laws, but this is more or less like the same in uh, uh, pseudo code. So basically, the idea is that uh, you have an ID function that uh, just return an object. So whatever you go, you have the same. And then uh, you have uh, something that uh, if you map uh, the composition of the two function, it's exactly the same that mapping one and then mapping the second, and then compose it together. And uh, for example, if uh, we have a functor that add uh, a space uh, to a string, uh, it cannot really uh, respect uh, these laws because uh, we cannot uh, if it always add a, a space, it cannot be the same. But um, just to have an example, let's uh, forget a, a second uh, about programming, and let's think about the city. I work uh, many years in uh, Milano, and now I'm in London. And uh, they are very different city, but uh, there are also some similarities. For example, there is uh, a main church in both, and uh, we can have uh, a functor that uh, take uh, Duomo in Milano, which is the main church, and transform in uh, Paul in London. And the castle of Milano is more or less equivalent uh, for the Tower of London. Of course, uh, I'm not saying that is uh, something kind of uh, philosophically true. It's uh, completely arbitrary, but it's uh, something that we wanted to use. Because we say, OK, for this, for example, for this problem, for this uh, thing that we want to do, it's useful for us uh, to consider these similarities. And uh, we wanted to keep uh, the uh, properties and uh, do transformation. I'm not saying that this is something that is really, really true in some way. I mean, you can imagine that, uh, I don't know, the main uh, church of London is not St. Paul, it's uh, w uh, Westminster. That, but that's not important, it's uh, completely arbitrary. The important part is that uh, we define uh, the mapping. And once we define the mapping, we can uh, imagine that, for example, uh, doing the um, going to Duomo to Castello and then Castello to Palazzo Reale is a kind of a, um, 
mapping, I don't know, a guiding tour, and uh, we can transform that uh, the same also for London, in the same way. And uh, you start thinking about in this way also when you go on your domain. And uh, yeah, this is what I want to say. When uh, we map to one category to another is a functor, when we stay in the same category is an end of functor. And uh, sometimes it's completely arbitrary because, for example, integer and uh, strings make a category in uh, itself, but uh, they are also part of the bigger category of the type system. So if we wanted to take uh, a functor that go to type system to type system is an end functor, but if we want to see as something that goes from a string to int is a, a single functor. But okay, um, there is a lot of n names, and so I hope <laughs> not. But um, let's see a practical example. Uh, how many of you know the try uh, class in Scala or? Okay, um, basically the try is uh, um, it's quite typical. I mean, of this uh, prog uh, programming uh, uh, functional programming libraries, it's a, a way to um, abstract over a possible uh, um, uh, exception. Because yeah, we saw that in functional programming we really don't like exception. We prefer that everything is uh, transformed, not having partial function. So the idea is that, uh, okay, we take something that is uh, quite uh, trivial, uh, just uh, to do this uh, stupid uh, example, as like uh, uh, transforming a string in an integer. That is something that can return um, an exception. If we put inside that way, basically, what we are saying is that uh, uh, you do this, uh, if everything goes well, uh, then you can map uh, transform plus one, so you, you you have something in integer and then you return four, basically. If uh, you try to do the same with uh, something that is not a, a number, this will raise an exception, so this will never be one, and this is what you have, a failure. So this is the idea of um, try. And uh, to do this, they implement uh, the function, the type class function, functors. And uh, you can see that uh, you can also uh, apply more than once. So you have a six, and then you can multiply by two, add in three, and then uh, checking that is 42. No, it's not 42, it's 15. <laughs> and uh, you can also do this uh, uh, like a getter default. So basically, if it's a success, return the success, otherwise return uh, 42. And this is uh, one uh, possible way, that there are many of them, and then of course we just try to cover a few, to apply uh, the idea of uh, mathematical category theory to programming. And uh, another way to look at fun uh, functors is a kind of forklift. So basically we have uh, a function that goes from A to B, and we transform it to a functor that goes from a functor da to functor db. Yeah, when you see f, usually is a functor idea. So we have uh, something like, uh, yeah, x to int. Then uh, when we lift, basically, our lift type will be something like uh, from a functor of uh, uh, string to a functor of int. And uh, the functor in, in uh, this case uh, specifically, the functor is a try functor. So, well, here we transform uh, 6 uh, and 42. Or if uh, this uh, will be uh, not valid string, it will be transformed to a failure, of course. So, this is a two way to see the functor. We can see as uh, something like, uh, yeah, like uh, using the map or using the lift. But this mathematically is the same. Just Sometimes it's uh, more natural to see in one way than to say in another way. And this is another very simple thing. So, so Yadin and Lemma is just a, a fixed category to the category of set, uh, locally small category. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Yadel and Lemma is actually quite simple things. It's just to say basically this one. If you have a, a functor of uh, something that you don't know what, uh, but you, you know that you have some, uh, if you apply a map from A to B, it will return a functor of B. Then what the Yadel uh, discovered, did not just discovered, demonstrated, is that the F must be A. I mean, it doesn't seem much, but uh, you know, it's uh, actually is quite useful. And uh, when we we use in the code, basically what uh, we use for is this one. Basically, uh, uh, we have a list. Okay, this k is just for the library that uh, to transform in something that is a functor. So our list also are a functor. And then uh, we call uh, the Yoneda of uh, our list. And then we apply a lot of map. We map plus, plus one, divided two, multiplied by three. What we have here, basically, is uh, something that uh, keep uh, this uh, information about uh, the mapping, but uh, still is not doing the mapping. It will, the actual mapping will be only done when we call the function that actually do the mapping which for some reason is called lower, I'm not sure but why. But only in that case we see 15. The nice thing is that uh, if we have a list of uh, one million of number and we want to apply uh, many transformation, which is, I mean, in this case, the transformation are very trivial, but transformation can also imply going to a database uh, or transforming uh, with a complicated algorithm. It when uh, you apply this, it will just uh, um, execute it once. So basically, it combine all the function and then just execute it one. It doesn't uh, copy the list every time. If you just uh, apply instead uh, um, a list, a map, a map, a map, uh, it will be copied every time. Otherwise, uh, you can do with streams, but that's another stuff. But this is a kind of a poor man streams way to do this stuff using uh, uh, functor composition functors composition. And uh, another thing that, uh, so we, we transform data using function. We transform function using functors. And uh, what do we want to transform functors? We use something that is called natural transformation. I know the naming is terrible, but uh, okay, <laughs> this is uh, how it is. And uh, basically the idea is that, uh, just uh, to go back to our uh, example. Um, so we have uh, the functor that goes to uh, Buckingham Palace, or for example, to Paris, to Versailles, but, uh, and then Duomo goes from uh, St. Paul or to Notre Dame, if we have a category of Paris and category of London. But then if we want to directly transform London to Paris, we, we apply a natural transformation, and then uh, Buckingham Palace will become Versailles. Because basically the idea is that uh, we take one uh, functor and we transform in another functor. And um, from a programming point of view, uh, natural transformation is something that we do uh, all the time. We don't even have, uh, know that uh, they have a name. So if uh, we have a try and we want to transform an option, then uh, we want to transform a list, we just write uh, the code. I mean, it seems quite uh, trivial, nothing that we want. Um, well, and it is, it just uh, technically is a, a natural transformation. But um, now we're, we just have to define the term. So now that we, um, we have a monoid, we have a defunctor as a concept, we can imagine two ways of uh, combining these two things. One is uh, doing a kind of sum of a functor, and the other is that kind of multiplication of functors. And um, in, um, in the first way, basically, we, we have a functor with uh, a function, and a functor with uh, a value, and we want uh, a functor with a new value, basically. Uh, yeah, this will be like B, not F F FDA apply FDA, so it will be. And the other way, basically, we have a, an A that return an F, a functor, and then we apply to an A that return another F. So we have a, something, a, a double function, a functors, a functor of a functor. So the f let's see the first case. It's called an applicative function. And uh, 
Yeah, this is the finishing mark. We can just skip to the code, basically. So we, we still have our list. And we have uh, two operations. One is plus one, and uh, the other is uh, double. But we can define this is just a normal uh, Kotlin, nothing special. And then we put in a list, basically. And then we say, OK, we use the values, and we apply the function. And we have a, uh, can you guess? where this number came from? I mean, we have a list with three numbers and two functions, and we have a six uh, result. Why well, not? There's two functions for every value. Yeah, exactly. It applied uh, the two functions for each value. So first apply the first function for the list, and then uh, apply the second one for the list. And this is what the uh, applicative does, basically. Another way to see the it's uh, technically the same, but another way is uh, to uh, if you, you have a function that want uh, more than one parameter, basically you can uh, apply applicative. So this is uh, the actual code, but this is a bit uh, terrible to use. So there is uh, this nice map to that. Uh, so you have a two list and uh, a, a function that uh, basically does uh, a p plus b, which is not incredibly sophisticated. And uh, yeah, and this is uh, your result. So again, so one, two, three, and four, and five. So you, you just basically uh, sum all together. So uh, yeah. And um, and also yeah, we can also do the same thing with uh, the try applicative. This that was uh, the list applicative, and this is the try applicative. And uh, in the try applicative, uh, yeah, we have uh, um, yeah three, five, and uh, fifteen to enter. And then when we apply this uh, tuple, basically just uh, to keep uh, all the results uh, separated. We have uh, 3, 5, and 15. Uh, but if uh, one is not good, uh, instead of having uh, a basically a try of uh, um, tuple, we have a failure. And also, this is just a small example for didactic purpose, but you can imagine for more complicated things than uh, uh, you, you just. Uh, you have a kind of uh, security that uh, you are not doing anything uh, wrong, uh, rather than writing directly the code, uh, leaving the applicative that does the uh, putting all the stuff together. And uh, yeah, the M word. Who have uh, heard uh, the word monad? Okay. <laughs> it's a kind of a scary thing that uh, everybody's kind of scary. But at the end of the day, a monad uh, is just a monoid in the category of endo factors. So what does this mean? Is that we have uh, our category, something that we saw before. We all have uh, our endo factor that uh, goes to the same uh, category because we collapse the category itself. And uh, we have uh, the natural transformation that uh, work on the factor itself. And uh, specifically, we have uh, these two natural transformation, unity and uh, multiplication. So unity is something that uh, create uh, uh, something, let's say, and um, from zero to create one. And the multiplication is something that if you have an F of an F, basically simplify. Another way to look at uh, the same uh, things is uh, using this uh, kind of a diagram, which is quite typical in Basically, this seems that uh, this means that if you have a, a, a type that is multiplied three times, basically you can apply the transformation one times and the other times to have uh, the original type, or you can also see on on the opposite way. And uh, this is also the same. I mean, the identity and uh, the simplification, and then uh, this is the composition. So you have type one and and uh, technically, we say that uh, the diagram commute, which means that it works. But uh, OK, this is uh, the diagram that give you an idea. But uh, the, um, yeah, let's see the actual code. But before the actual code, uh, let's um, 
uh, remember wh why we care about monads because the monads uh, allows sequences. So the most of things about uh, um, when we have um, uh, functional programming is everything is kind of uh, blocked in time. So we have defined all this transformation, all the stuff that we saw till now. There is no flow of time. I mean, everything is uh, immediate. But when we start, uh, start uh, talking about monads, we have a kind of time. So we can define sequences because in the monads we compose stuff and so one came after the other. And um, okay, there are a lot of monads, but I don't even, oh, each one has a kind of a specialistic uh, feature and uh, you can also write your own if you actually need. But uh, let's see one example with the reader monad. So the reader monad uh, more or less work like uh, dependence injection in uh, object programming. And uh, the idea is that uh, we do define a monad context binding, and then we have uh, this function that basically get a user and uh, return the user from a specific context. But we don't specify which is the context, basically. So when we write uh, this code here, we we don't know actually where the user came from. I mean, it can be REST API, it can be database, it can be local cache, it can be mock for test, whatever. But uh, all the logic here, we just uh, write uh, this logic uh, as it was uh, simply um, what do we do with the user one, with the user two, and then uh, with the user one, user two, we, we can go to this other method that uh, find the common friends from one and two, and then return the result. And uh, and then when we um, we put all this stuff together, we we can define our logic uh, uh, here, and then we do a lot of other stuff that we don't really care. We just pass the logic around, and then when we say logic run with uh, an ID. And then we pass the actual context, which is in this case is the database. It will be executed. And there are also monads uh, specified for async uh, computation, parallel, or stuff like that. And uh, the idea is that basically this is how um, dependency injection works. So you don't have to specify where the user came from, how it will work. So when you write your logic module, everything is completely logical and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, where the object came from. And then uh, in the module that actually have uh, the plumbing with the actual database, you can specify the context and then uh, the logic will run there. And uh, the only, um, yeah, the only things of course is that uh, you need uh, to, to give uh, this function for each uh, possible context basically, but that's why. And this is how you use monads. It's not something um, terrible or very complicated. Ma it's not something that must be very complicated. At the end, it's quite easy, and uh, you can uh, start using if you like. But it's not something that you have to. So that was just an example. Uh, you can do incredibly uh, sophisticated things with monads. But, uh, that was just an example for this talk, uh, and it's um, time to conclude. So the functional programming dilemma is uh, how much functional we want to be. And uh, if we are perfectly pure programs are perfectly useless. So we don't really want to be too much pure, pure functional because, I mean, the main point is at the end is always to return value to the user, not uh, just uh, enjoy mathematical stuff. And uh, the other cl uh, classical question is, I don't care monads, where should I? And uh, now, I, I, me too, I don't care about monads. What I care is uh, defining the system behavior and define it precisely. If uh, we don't care about uh, defining uh, precisely the system behavior, if uh, we are quite uh, happy enough with something that work most of the case, but there are probably a lot of uh, kind of cases that we really don't know what's happened and we don't care. Okay, functional programming is not uh, a good uh, fit for that um, case. 
but uh, if you want to be completely sure that uh, whatever we do, we already consider uh, the all the possible cases, and we don't have a nasty surprise, then functional program is incredibly good fit. And uh, if, we are, if we are serious about functional programming, studying category theory can help us uh, to understand better and uh, having something that is actually simpler and easier to read uh, rather than, uh, I, mean, I don't know, I have to invent the wheel every time. I have to, it's a bit like uh, if I wanted to use, a, if I want to be an engineer, mechanical engineer, I needed to study, I don't know, uh, integrals and the function and the derivatives uh, because it's useful. But uh, if I just wanted to uh, to know what is the distance from here to there, I don't need to study the integral of uh, velocity of uh, stuff like that. So it's uh, about you. So how to use morphism in uh, real polymer? It's a really magical word there. I mean, there are, I keep finding, a new, since I st start studying this stuff, I keep finding a new way to use it in uh, reality. Um, any question? Okay, and then if you want to follow me. 